Okay, so we're still up in the highlands at the old base. Um, we're in the more developed park part of it where there's pavement and the bathrooms and all that. And this is one of the things they really couldn't knock down. Now, this is one of the big shore battery bunkers that's here. And this thing is huge. Take a walk with me. We'll check it out. I don't think you can go inside the bunker itself. There's entrances off on the sides. It looks like they got that gated off. But you can go through to the other side. And you can see where the battery was. They would have had, in this one, they would have had a great big cannon that rode on like a like a gear that could turn from side to side sort of like the way the turn on a tank turns and they would have had these trees cut down they would have had these trees cut down so you could see out to the water here's kind of an explanation of what it was there's the gun that would have been here you can see that's that's a pretty good size cannon um, this is what remains is the bunker this would have been a, what they call a magazine so they would have stored projectiles oh, we gotta get the right on Come here. Kira had a little friend that came by. Come here. Come here. <laughs> this would have stored like projectiles. It would have housed the oncoming shift and everything. Um, you can see it goes all the way through the other side. There's another battery at the other end. We're standing here as long as we are because quite frankly, there's this wonderful cool breeze coming out of yes. there. And even though it's October, it's still warm. It is. <laughs> Especially when you're hiking. So come on out here. And this is where the gun would have been. You can see the track and the ground it would have run on so it could turn. Here would have been all these anchor points for various hoists to hoist the ammunition bags and just move things around. Um, and there was one of these at each end, it was a twin gun. So you would have had one of these at each end of this bunker, looking out over the ocean, uh, basically ready to do battle against any Axis, really German uh, warship or submarine that come within range. Because again, they were, they were worried about the Germans either shelling or you know, sinking ships off the coast or even trying to invade at some point. So they wanted to be prepared. And it was emplacements like this that prevented all that from happening, that you know, kept America safe during the World War II. This was built in 1942, as was the other one at the other end, and it would have served throughout the end of the war. We'll come out out here, we'll take a look at it from the front, kind of the business end of things. Again, the guns are long gone, but everything else remains. Basically, the idea of this, and you can see how thick that is. That's probably five, I don't know, maybe as many as eight feet of concrete thick. And it's reinforced, it's gonna be really, really strong. And the gun would be kind of hidden in here. It's, it's set back from the edge of the hill, so you wouldn't be able to see it from out to sea. So the ships that were being shelled, if they had had to do it, they never would have seen where it came from. And even if they started just randomly shooting back with their guns, this was hard enough that it could have taken quite a few hits to the roof of the bunker and all that without doing any real damage to anything. So it was really built to you know, withstand a lot of punishment. Um, it never had to be used. It, it was manned and they were ready, but it was never needed, which Thankfully. is really a good thing, yeah. And then after that, um, it went over to the Air Force. When the Air Force was formed, it became the Nike Missile Base. I remember, um, again, when I was a kid back in the 80s, I would come up here with my friends. We could get through the fence. It was abandoned. And we'd do some urban exploring. And all of this out here past where the batteries are, there were buildings out here. Uh, there was a school here. Uh, it was like a town. Like, people had lived here for a couple of decades. You know, and they were all military personnel. There was officer housing. There was a nightclub. There was all that stuff. It was all abandoned. Um, it's all long gone. Kind all of a shame. Gone. Yeah, it is kind of a shame. What they did in that period was they took these gun bunkers and they made them basically fallout shelters for the staff. Um, I remember you'd come here and it, and it would have stenciled on the wall um, in kind of old flaking paint. It would say it could accommodate this many persons and they would have had supplies and stuff in here in case World War III came with the Russians, excuse me, the Soviets, uh, you know, those, those folks would have had a place to shelter. So very cool. We're gonna go around the other side. We'll be right back with you. Just wanted to show you this real quick before we move on. 
just wanted to show real quick. We're walking down the trail, and lo and behold, as he was talking about how the guns have been taken, and then we're walking down, surprise, there's a gun. So we're heading over that direction. Okay, super cool. Um, looks like they re-emplaced one of the guns just for historic purposes. So this, this would have been what would have been here. It's obviously not functional and the turntable's gone. But as you can see, this is a pretty a substantial cannon. Uh, I don't know how big this is. You know, this looks like a 16-inch like a naval gun, like what a battleship would have. So this thing could fling a projectile like 20 or 30 miles maybe. And it would have a heck of a lot of bang when it got there. This is really, really cool that they, they put this back. That way we all get to see it. I can remember that these had been gone. So when we came around that corner and I saw a gun in this one, I was a little surprised at first because I knew there wasn't one here years ago. But from what I can gather, you know, for historical purposes, they thought it was worth putting one back just so people could see what this place had been and how important it was to our country's defense. This is really cool. It's, um, it's really great when they take a place that was something like this, was an abandoned military installation, and instead of selling it for it to become condominiums or something, they make a park out of it, and that way everybody can use it. And this place is beautiful. There's you know a lot of big trees. There's all these paths. that used to be the little access roads. So since we've been here, we've probably seen 100 people. They're hiking, they're biking, they're walking their dogs, they're out with their kids. They're enjoying a beautiful day. It's just really nice to see you know, some of the public land being used that way instead of being sold off. Because um, I, I, you know, personally, I think we need more parks, less condos, but that's just me. Anyway. <laughs> Here's this gun, really, really cool. We'll go back down into the bunker here. And Once we get unwrapped from CK, because yes. CK's getting all wrapped up by the dog. Kira, you want to say hi? Say hi, everybody. Hi, Kira. She's having the time of her life. You know she loves all this stuff. So here's the breech end of the gun. Oh, it's open. That's cool. Oh, um, well, those open. folks here who are into firearms, this is the chamber. <laughs> so this is, this is pretty sizable, as you can see. And you can pause your video if you would like to actually read up on this. I'll just kind of scroll down here real quick. And we'll come over to this other one. They got like four of them. Hold on, I'm coming. All right, now we'll walk over to the other ones. So yeah, this is a 16-inch gun. It's a naval gun, much like what a battleship would have. Um, as you can see, the gun section was divided into a gun squad of 12 guys. So there would have been 12 guys working out here, actually operating the gun, and an ammunition squad of 29 other guys who would have been getting the ammunition from the bunker behind us to the gun. So you have a total there, by my math, of uh, 41 people. So each shift of this for each gun this end would have had 41 people, the other end would have had 41 people to operate each gun. That's pretty impressive. That's, that's 82 people per shift operating these things. So it was a lot of manpower, and these things are just massive. Of course, this one will be much like the other side. Oh, that was a step down, my apologies. Oh, that feels really nice breeze. But there's the other side that we are just looking in on. And the side's closed off, obviously, so you go in through the main side. So yeah, very, very cool. There goes the trail dog. That's us up at the Short Batteries and the old Air Force Base up in Highlands. Hope you guys enjoyed the little tour of the bunkers, the trails. Um, really cool place. You get up this way, go ahead and check it out. Thanks.